Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are going to explore the deaths of three tourist backpackers, David Wilson, Jean Michel Barquette, and Mark Slater, who fell victim to one of the most deadly and vile regimes in the world, in a country which was attempting to reopen itself to international tourism, the Khmer Rouge. Their kidnapping and ultimate deaths created an international diplomatic storm. To give a very basic rundown of the Khmer Rouge regime led by leader Pol Pot, the Khmer Rouge engaged in a Cambodian civil war between 1970 and 1975, primarily against North Vietnamese troops who were using supply lines to reach South Vietnam during the Vietnam War. By the 17th of April 1975, the Khmer Rouge reached Cambodia's capital Phnom Penh. The country's name was changed to the Democratic Kampuchea, with all people moved into rural areas of Cambodia to rebuild the country on a model of the 11th century. Western medicine was disregarded, temples were destroyed, with libraries and schools closed. Over four years, the Khmer Rouge oversaw the killing fields as part of a broad state-sponsored genocide. An estimated 1.7 to 2.5 million people died under the Khmer Rouge, with the majority, 1,386,734, dying at the killing fields. The killing fields were part of the judicial process of the Khmer Rouge regime for minor or political crimes, with people sent to the killing fields for re-education, which often meant certain death. Others died from disease or starvation, with one third of Cambodian women missing their periods due to starvation, with rations as small as 250 grams per day, with children, the sick and elderly, suffering from malnutrition and starvation. At the time, the country had a population of 8 million, meaning that an estimated 30% of the population was killed. The regime only fell in 1979 when Vietnamese forces invaded the country on the 25th of December 1978, entering Phnom Penh on the 8th of January 1979 with the Kampuchea army woefully unprepared, marking the end of the Khmer Rouge's control of the country and the creation of the People's Republic of Kampuchea under a 10-year occupation of the country by Vietnam. The Khmer Rouge found refuge in Khao Lam Kamp in Trat province in northern Thailand on the border with Cambodia, with the Thai government sheltering and protecting the regime. The Khmer Rouge retained a seat in the United Nations, occupied by Phuong Prasif under the name Democratic Kampuchea until 1982, and then the coalition government of Democratic Kampuchea during a guerrilla fought battle for control between the Vietnamese-backed leader of the People's Republic of Kampuchea and the Khmer Rouge. The country changed to the state of Cambodia in 1989, following the withdrawal of Vietnamese troops and then finally to Cambodia in 1992, under Heng Sam Rin. Peace efforts began in Paris, France in 1989, culminating in the Paris Conference on the 23rd of October 1991. Overseen by the United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia, elections took place in May 1993, with the Royalist Pek Party, led by Prince Ranadrid, winning the most votes. In the early 1990s, an increasingly brazen and desperate Khmer Rouge made kidnapping a full-scale enterprise with ransoms ranging from $40,000 to a full bag of rice, with American aid worker Melissa Hoynes kidnapped in 1993 and held for 42 days before being ransomed for a few tons of rice, dried fish and building supplies. Despite the dangers and internal conflicts within the country, international tourism was increasing in the vulnerable state, with 118,183 international tourists in 1993 and 176,617 international tourists in 1994. It was in this environment that three tourists found themselves together at the Capital Hotel in the capital, Phnom Penh. 
They were Jean Michel Barquet, who was from Nice, France, and age 27, who was on the left. He had just arrived in Cambodia. Mark Slater, who was on the right, age 28, a former worker in a plastics factory from Corby, England. And David Wilson, in the centre, age 29, a social worker and football coach at the Edith Vale Aspendale Football Club from Melbourne, Australia. They asked the manager of the Capital Hotel, Pang Sol Heap, how to get to Kampot on the shores of the Gulf of Siam, who informed them that compared to hiring a car, a train would be $3.19 cheaper for each individual, engulfed by the thought of adventure in taking national routes 3 and 4 with Royal Cambodian Armed Forces with AK-47s patrolling the trains, as well as the cheaper prices, the three backpackers took the train on the 26th of July 1994, in what was to be their final train trip, and a decision that would cost their lives. Early on the afternoon of the 26th of July 1994, explosions shook the train with 40 Khmer Rouge fighters storming down the hills with machine guns. After 11 passengers and two of the train's security team members were killed, the Cambodian armed forces abandoned the train and left the passengers to protect themselves. The attack was overseen by Khmer Rouge Colonel Chuk Rin, who is pictured to the left, who was second in command at Phnom Vor, the Khmer Rouge's base, as well as guerrilla commander Sam Biff, who is pictured to the right. They took anything they could, motorbikes, rice, jewellery, cash and pigs, as well as 20 hostages, including Wilson, Barquette and Slater, towards their base in Phnom Vor. A hostage noted that the three were huddled together in a small cottage and crying while shackled together at night. Thirteen Cambodian hostages were eventually killed, with the remaining four Cambodian hostages released. On the 3rd of August, the Khmer Rouge released photographs of the three backpackers and an audio tape which was delivered to the Cambodian government through intermediaries, with prices for their ransom ranging from $50,000 US dollars to $150,000 US dollars, with Australian, British and French governments having a policy of never paying ransoms. On the 16th of August, the Khmer Rouge upped their demands, demanding that Australia, Britain and France cut off all assistance to the Royal Cambodian Government. Pol Pot was not interested in using the free hostages for financial gain, but as political pawns, that he could exploit as part of the Khmer Rouge's desperate and ultimately fruitless battle against the Cambodian Government. By the second week of August, the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces moved in on Pom Vor, deploying heavy artillery and thousands of troops around the Khmer Rouge's rebel base. A reporter with a British newspaper, the Sunday Times, arranged a radio conversation with the hostages, with Slater stating in relation to the bombs, mortars and rockets, it is as if they are bombing to kill us. We are so, so scared. Unless the bombing stops, we have no chance of living. We were told we were going to be executed a week or two ago. Slater described the hostages daily routine as waking up at 5am, eating rice and pumpkin at 10am, laying around until 7pm or 8pm when they were shackled together to sleep amidst the bombing. Barquet who suffered from malaria and an infection from a leg wound as a result of a sharpened bamboo stake, which was a booby trap, told the reporter, We are going to die here. I am too young to die. I am an innocent person. At the end of August, a videotape of a gaunt Barquette, Slater and Wilson made it to Phnom Penh, with the trio further imploring for the bombings to stop. Another videotape was released later in August, which saw Slater further begging for their release. On the 16th of October, Colonel Chuk Rin, who had fallen out with the head of Phnom Vor, Nun Payet, defected to the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces as a colonel. By the end of October, Cambodian troops invaded Phnom Vor, with Payet and his troops escaping into the mountains. On the 30th of October, the bodies of Barquette, Slater and Wilson were found in a shallow grave not far from Pumvor base by the Australian Federal Police. 
Intelligence reports suggested that the trio were murdered between the 8th of September and the 28th of September. The corpses were returned to their native countries. In June 1999, military rebel Norn Payet, who held the free tourists hostage and had defected to the Cambodian government, was sentenced to life in prison for the arrest and murder of Barquet, Slater and Wilson. Sam Biff defected to the Royal Cambodian Army in 1996 and a manhunt for him began in 1999, following a Thai newspaper report of his home in Pai Lin, next door to a police chief he was arrested for kidnapping, conspiring in premeditated murder, terrorism and robbery in May 2002. In December 2002, he was sentenced to life in prison, dying in prison on the 15th of February 2008 at the age of 74. In 2000, Chuk Rin was caught but released in the middle of that year due to an amnesty between the Cambodian government and the Khmer regime. Remaining on the run, he was re-arrested in 2002 in the north of Cambodia. On the 6th of September 2002, he was sentenced to life in prison with his verdict upheld in 2003. He managed to escape once again in 2005, spending his time brazenly in Phnom Penh, before being re-arrested in 2005 and sentenced back to life in prison on the 27th of October 2005. He remains in Pre Sar prison. In 1996, half of the remaining Khmer Rouge soldiers defected to the Cambodian government, effectively spelling the death of the regime. This coincided with Khmer Rouge leaders switching to the Cambodian government. Sentenced to life in prison in a show trial in late July 1997, Pol Pot died in his sleep of heart failure on the 15th of April 1998. On the 29th of December 1998, leaders of the Khmer Rouge apologised for the 1970s genocide and by December 1999, all remaining leaders surrendered, with the Khmer Rouge ceasing to exist albeit many of the individuals who committed one of the worst genocides that the world has seen since the Second World War never saw justice. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.